Hi, I'm Kristen Omdahl and welcome back to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for how to make the beautiful Owen Tapestry Crochet Motif Blanket. In the first part of the video, I'm going to show you how to work tapestry crochet in the round with two colors to make the motifs. Then in the next part of the video, I'll show you how to join the motifs to each other, a one-sided join, and a two-sided join, and then I'm going to show you how to make this gorgeous twisted fringe edging. It's so beautiful. It's gorgeous as a baby blanket in this size, and we'll also talk about how to modify the pattern to make any size blanket. Let's get started. To make this blanket, we'll be using a size K, 10 and a half, or 6.5 millimeter crochet hook, and we'll be using Be So Baby yarn doubled, we're going to be doubling the yarn throughout the project. So we're using two colors. The original blanket was done in snowflake and platinum. And for the sample today, I'll be using cherry and clover. One thing that I do like to recommend is that when you're doubling yarn, especially when you're doing a color work project, it's really helpful to wind the yarn into double yarn balls first. And what I mean by that is taking each ball of yarn of the same color and simply winding them into a ball. And by doing this, instead of having four strands to keep straight in your project bag, you only have two. You'll have your double strand coming from this ball and your double strand coming from this ball. I find it to be extremely helpful in keeping things a little more organized and neat in your bag because as you'll see later, there are some tips and tricks for keeping your yarn from getting too tangled between changing color, but it's just that much easier when you only have two strands rather than four to manage. The next thing that I wanted to point out is that the color changes on a tapestry crochet chart are a little bit different than on a regular chart. At least when I draw them, this is how I do it. So I want to explain this before we begin. Normally, I alternate color between rounds so that you can see where one round begins and the other one ends. But instead on tapestry crochet charts, I find it's much more helpful to show you the color changes of the pattern. So you'll see here on round one, it's all in color A. Round two is all in color B. Round three is all in color A. So on those three rounds, we're not going to carry the second yarn with us. There's no point. It would just be carried all the way around and be a little bit of a waste of yarn. But at the beginning of round four, we start with color A and notice how we ended, start with color B and notice how we ended with color A at the end of round three. So here we're going to have to change color to begin with. And then we're going to be changing color throughout this round. And that's where you'll see the color difference between each of the stitches. And then going forward every round past that is done in color work. And I'm going to show you step by step how to do that now with the yarn. Whether you follow along in the written instructions for each round or follow the chart, I will be referring back to the chart throughout this demonstration, but also saying what the rounds say in the written instructions, just to help you understand both ways of learning this project. So before we pick up our yarn, I wanted to show you that round one starts with a chain five and slip stitch to the first chain to create your chain five ring. Then round one is chain three that counts as a double crochet, 11 double crochets in the ring, and slip stitch to the top of the chain three at the beginning of the round to join. So now we'll do that with our yarn, and we're starting with color A, and notice I'm doing, I have a ball of yarn that's already doubled because we're doubling our yarn throughout this project. It just makes this blanket so cushy and cozy being doubled. I love how thick the project ends up being. Okay, so we'll start with our chain five. Slip stitch to the fifth chain to form our chain five ring. Chain three. When I work stitches in the ring, I like to also work around the tail just so it's one less loose end to weave in at the end. So we're going to do 11 double crochets in the ring, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, that's a double crochet. 
The chain three counts as our first double crochet, so that's our second double crochet. We want a total of 12 stitches, a chain three and 11 more double crochets. Okay, we've come to the end of our round. We have our chain three, 11 additional double crochets in the ring, and now we're about to slip stitch to join. We slip into the top third chain of the beginning chain three to join, but instead of using our color A, we're going to add color B to the last stitch here, or that slip stitch, because we want to begin the next stitch in color B. So I'm gonna tighten these up a little bit, and we're doing a chain three, which counts as a double crochet. Oh, let's look at that back on the chart first. Okay, so round two begins with a chain three in color B that counts as a double crochet and a double crochet in the same stitch. Then in each stitch around, we're going to work two double crochets in each stitch. So we'll repeat that all the way around, slip stitch to the top of the chain three at the beginning of the round to join, and we should have a total of 24 stitches this time. So we did our chain three, changed color, did our chain three. We're not going to carry color A because it's not being used anywhere else in this round. So we'll work a second double crochet in that same space. What I am going to do is work over the tail. Okay, and then two double crochets in the next stitch. And two double crochets in each stitch around. Okay, this is what the end of round two should look like. And we're going to insert our crochet hook into the third of the chain three at the beginning of the round to slip stitch and join. But instead of using color B, we're going to refer, revert back to color A because the next round begins with color A. And we're going to carry along color B just to tighten it up. So we'll slip stitch to join pull each of those snug, and that's what the end of round two should look like. Let's refer back to our chart now. Round three is done all in color A, so we're not going to carry along color B on this round. We're going to chain one, single crochet in the first stitch, single crochet in each stitch all the way around, and slip stitch to join. So we should have a total of 24 single crochets at the end of this round. So we'll chain one, single crochet in the first stitch, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, that's a single crochet, and we'll single crochet in each stitch all the way around. We've come to the end of round three. We're going to insert our crochet hook into the first single crochet at the beginning of the round going to slip stitch to join, but we need to be prepared for starting the next round with color B. So we will slip stitch with color B instead of color A. Pull both yarns taut to tighten everything up. And that's what the end of round three should look like. We're gonna look back on our chart now. Round four is when we're going to start carrying both yarns because we're going to be using both yarns in round four and each round going forward. So the first, at the beginning of round four, we're going to chain in color B. We're going to chain three, which counts as a double crochet. Work two double crochets in the same stitch. With color A, work one double crochet in the next stitch. With color B, work three double crochets in the next stitch and we'll repeat this all the way around. So let me show you what I mean. Okay, so now we're going to work th chain three and two double crochets in that first stitch with color B while carrying color A along. I'm gonna work right over it. Now, we're done with this set of stitches, but on the last step before we finish that last stitch, we have to drop the color we're working with and pick up the next color to finish the last step of that stitch. Now we're going to put color B over the stitches so that we're working over it as we do our next stitch and work a double crochet with color A into the next stitch. 
But before we finish the last step of it, switch back to color B to work the next set of three double crochets in the next stitch with color B. Okay, we're on the last step of that sequence of color B. So we're going to finish the last step with color A so we can work one double crochet in the, in the next stitch with color A. And we're on the last step before changing color. So we'll change back to color B by working the last step of that stitch with color B and then work three double crochets in the next stitch with color B. And we're going to repeat this all the way around. Okay, we've made it all the way around round four and we're going to work the last step of the last stitch in color B. Slip stitch to the top of the chain three at the beginning of the round to join. And this is what the end of round four should look like. Round five, we'll refer back to the chart first. Round five begins in color B. We're going to chain three and two double crochet together over the next two stitches. In the next stitch with color A, we're going to work four double crochets. In color B, over the next three stitches, we're going to work a three double crochet together. Now notice that we're working the stitches in the same color. So we're gonna work the three double crochet together over the three double crochets on the previous round, all in color B and everywhere there's a single stitch in color A, we're going to be working four double crochets in that stitch. So it's a good thing to pay attention to here that you're working the same color into the same color. It'll help you to stay on track on this round. So let's show you that in the yarn now. So we chain three, and we're still going to carry our yarn because we have to use both colors on this round. So we want to carry the yarn over as we go. And we're going to work two double crochet together over the next two stitches. Yarn over your hook, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Now we'll, we'd yarn over and pull through three, but we're also changing color because on the next stitch, we're going to be working in a different color. So we'll do that last step of yarn over, pull through three in color A. And now carrying that color B over the stitch so that we're working over it, we're gonna work four double crochets in color A all into that next stitch. And the last step of the last stitch, we will switch back to the other color and then work a double crochet three together over the next three stitches. Yarn over, in, let's see, let's do that while talking this time. Yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Now we're going to yarn over and pull through all four loops on our hook, but we're also changing color. So we'll do that step in the opposite color. Four double crochets in the next stitch with color A. Change color on the last step of the last stitch and three double crochet together over the next three stitches. And this is what we're going to repeat all the way around. And 
and notice how I got my yarns tangled up here. So every time I notice it, I try to fix it right away. And the best way to avoid them getting tangled is by picking a position for each of them to be in and trying to be consistent about where you pull your yarns from. So I'm going to show you that here. I'm working with color A right now. Okay, so as I drop color A, I usually drop it to the front and color B, I leave to the back. And I kind of keep yarn ball A closer and yarn B ball further away to help me remember where, which position I want them each to be in. Because it helps because once you pull the yarns from the same space each time, they will never get tangled. So I'm gonna leave that one to the back now, pick this one up to the front and notice how they're not tangled at all because of that. But as soon as you make the mistake and pull them both from the front or pull them both from the back or just aren't consistent in general, you'll end up tangling them and that's okay, but the sooner you recognize it and fix it, okay, we're gonna drop that one to the front, pick this one up from the back. The sooner you recognize it and fix it, the less likely you are to have a huge knot on your hands, especially when you're working out of a bag. Okay, so we're going to repeat this all the way around. Okay, we're at the end of round five, and we're going to change color for the last step of our last stitch before we slip stitch to the first stitch at the beginning of the round to join. And this is what the end of round five should look like. Come back to the chart for round six. Round six starts with a chain three that counts as a double crochet in color B then two double crochet, then all in color A, two double crochets in the next stitch, one double crochet into each of the next three stitches. In color B, one double crochet over the cluster stitch, or the, over the double crochet three together from the previous row. And then in color A, two double crochets in the next stitch, one double crochet into each of the next stitches. And we'll repeat that all the way around. So the trick on this one is we do the chain three at the beginning of the round a little strange, but it's in order to keep our colors in the right sequence. So chain three counts as the first double crochet and it's supposed to be in color B, but we're going to do the first two chains in color B and the third chain in color A which gives us our three chains that count as the double crochet and also positions us to be in the correct color for working the next stitch. So now we'll do two double crochets in the next stitch, one double crochet in each of the next three stitches, all in color A. And on the last step of the last stitch, we will work in color B so that we can work one double crochet in the next stitch, whoops, <laughs> one double crochet in the next stitch in color B, but last step, replace with color A, and then work our two double crochets in the next stitch and one double crochet each in each of the next three stitches. And we'll repeat this all the way around. Okay, we've made it all the way around round six, and now we will finish the last step of the last stitch in color B to slip stitch into the top third of the ch chain three, uh, top third of the chain three at the beginning of the round to join, and this is what the end of round six should look like. Round seven, we'll refer back to the chart for a second. Round seven begins with a chain one and single crochet into the first stitch, half double crochet in the next stitch, double crochet in the next stitch, three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets all in the next stitch, one double crochet in the next stitch, one half double crochet in the next stitch, single crochet in the next stitch, and that's all in color B, and then one single crochet into each of the next 11 stitches in color A, and we'll repeat that all the way around. And this is only on a motif that isn't getting joined on any sides. After this, I will show you how to do that as well. So we're going to chain one, single crochet 
into the first stitch. Half double crochet in the next stitch, yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook, double crochet in the next stitch. In the next stitch, work three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets, double crochet in the next stitch, half double crochet in the next stitch, and single crochet in the next stitch. And this is our last stitch in color B, so we will switch our yarn on the last step of that stitch to color A, and now work one single crochet in each of the next 11 stitches in color A. On the last step of the last stitch, we will change back to color B and work another repeat of what we did at the beginning of the round. So we're repeating what we've established all the way around. And at the end of round seven, this is what our finished motif should look like. Next up, I'll be showing you how to join a one-sided join of these motifs, and then I'll be showing you how to do a two-sided join of the motifs and then finally, we'll be talking about making the beautiful twisted fringe edging. Okay, so we have one finished motif here, and we have a second motif here where we're working the final round, and we're going to join this motif to this motif from corner to corner on one side in the final round. So how we're going to do that, and so we're doing a couple of things. We're doing tapestry crochet, so we're carrying two different colors of yarn at the same time. We're following in our established pattern, and we're slip stitching into each stitch on the adjacent motif as we go to create that perfectly seamed line. So the, where we start is in the chain three corners. So the chain three corner is a chain one, slip stitch into the second of the chain threes on the adjacent motif. chain one. That slip stitch replaces the stitch, the chain. And that's the only time in this pattern that the slip stitch replaces the stitch. In the rest of the pattern, the slip stitch is in addition to the stitch. Oh, let me show you on the chart so you can see what I mean. Because this is different than how we normally do motifs. So on the chart, you'll see that there, we're not replacing any of the stitches along the side here we're adding a slip stitch after making the stitch for our final round. The only place we're replacing a stitch is in the corners. We're replacing a chain in the chain three of the corner with a slip stitch. The rest of the time we're adding a, a slip stitch. So now let me show you what that looks like because the next part of this pattern is to work three more double crochets in this stitch. So we'll work one double crochet and then coming back to the adjacent motif, slip stitch into the adjacent stitch or the, the same, whoops, I didn't grab all the loops. Okay, so we've got our stitch here, slip stitch into the next double crochet on the adjacent motif, and now we've joined that stitch. So now we'll come back and work another double crochet in the same stitch here, and again, if you're unfamiliar with the pattern, just go back. This is exactly what we did for the final round of the pattern. When we weren't joining, we're just adding the slip stitches. So we did the next stitch and we slip stitched into the next stitch on the adjacent motif. So we'll do a third double crochet in the same stitch and then slip stitch into the next stitch on the adjacent motif. I'm gonna set this down for a second so you can see the corner and those three stitches are joined already. Okay, the next stitch in our stitch pattern is to work a double crochet in the next stitch. 
and we'll slip stitch to the next stitch on the adjacent motif. The next stitch is a half double crochet in the next stitch. And slip stitch into the next stitch on the adjacent motif. And our next stitch is a single crochet on our working motif. And then slip stitch into the adjacent. Okay, now we're going to switch yarns for our next stitch. And I'm going to chain one with my new yarn because I feel like that's the best way to change colors in this particular scenario. And we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next 11 stitches here in color A. But at the same time, we're going to do a slip stitch into the next stitch on the adjacent motif after each stitch. One thing you'll notice when you're doing this is if you feel like you've gotten off track a little bit, you're working, the, you're slip stitching into the same color stitch as the color of yarn that you're using. So, okay, whatever color yarn you're using for the stitch on the working motif, that is the same color that you sh of stitch you should be slipping into on the adjacent motif. So if your colors are off, then your stitch might be off as well. So then your joins are off. So it's a good little catch. Okay, we've done our 11 stitches in color A. So now we will change color again. And I find that the best way to do this is to just do a little chain one. And then come back to our working motif and we'll work a single crochet in the next stitch. Ah, we didn't work over color A though. Let's grab that yarn and pull it over here. We wanna work over the yarn that we're not working with right now and slip stitch into the next stitch on the adjacent and notice it's green because we're working in green or color B. Then half double crochet in the next stitch. Slip stitch into the next stitch. Double crochet into the next stitch on our working motif. Slip stitch into the next stitch on the adjacent motif. Now for our pattern, we work one three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet into the, this next stitch. So half of that corner is going to be joined to the adjacent motif. And then the other half will be worked along the side because we're only joining a one-sided join for this motif. So one double crochet, slip stitch, two double crochets, slip stitch, three double crochets, slip stitch, then chain one, slip stitch into the second chain of the chain three on the adjacent, chain one, so that counts as our chain three space for the corner, and then we'll work three more double crochets into that same stitch, and we're not joining anymore because this is a one-sided join motif, which means we only join from one corner to the next corner. In the next segment, I'll show you how to do a two-sided join. Joining the motifs on two sides is almost exactly the same as what we did for joining on one side, except we're going to join from this corner, across to this corner, and across to this corner. But we'll be doing the exact same thing otherwise, meaning we're going to work in the exact same established pattern for the last round of the motif, and we're going to be joining with a slip stitch to the adjacent motif stitch after we complete each stitch on our last round of our working motif, except in the corners where we'll replace our chain three with a chain one, slip stitch, chain one. So here's chain one, slip stitch, chain one. So let me show you what I mean. We're gonna start in a, the first corner here, and we've worked our first chain slip stitch into the center chain on the adjacent motif, chain one. 
and now we're going to work three double crochets into this same stitch only after each stitch we will slip stitch into the adjacent stitch on the adjacent motif And since I already showed you this for the first side, we will now fast forward ahead until we get to the corner so I can show you how we join in the corner. Okay, we've joined along the first side of our motif that we're joining on two sides, and we've come to our corner. Now at this point, we have already joined two of these motifs, or we've joined three of these motifs all into the same center chain of one of the chain three spaces. So what you want to do is make sure that when you do your chain one slip stitch chain one, you work into that same chain as well. It gives a really clean and professional look if all of the joins are done in the same chain. So we've now done our three double crochets, chain one, we'll slip stitch into that center chain one space in the adjacent motif same one that we joined the other motifs in, chain one, so that counts as our chain three space. And now even though we worked along this side and joined with slip stitches to this motif, now we, we will be doing that same thing, only doing the next repeat along this side and joining with slip stitches to this motif. And that's how we'll create that two-sided join. So other than understanding where we're going and where we're placing our slip stitches, we're essentially doing the same exact thing. So now we'll work our three double crochets into that same stitch, but after each stitch, slip stitch into the adjacent next stitch on the adjacent motif. And we'll work across to the color change so I can show you one more time how I like to change color in tapestry crochet when we're also joining motifs as we go. Okay, so we're ready to change color now, and I know normally when we're doing the tapestry crochet and changing color in crochet in general, we do the last step of the last stitch in the new color. But when we're changing colors while we're slip stitch joining to adjacent motifs, I find it's a little easier to just add a chain one after that slip stitch to join, it gives us the right color positioning and the extra chain one doesn't add a whole lot of bulk or anything. I just, I think it works a lot easier. Okay, so now we did our chain one, changed yarn positions, and now single crochet in the next stitch and slip stitch in the next stitch on the adjacent motif. And you'll wanna repeat this all the way across until we get to the next corner. Okay, so we've joined across both sides of this motif and at this point we're ready to do our corner join so we did a chain one well we'll do a chain one then slip stitch to the center chain of the chain three space on the adjacent motif chain one and then come back to our original motif and just finish off the stitch pattern of that final round of the motif we're done with all the joining on this motif and just always be aware of where you're at in a project because it is pretty easy to make the mistake of thinking that you need to keep joining and try to join on this side and what you'll find is that you won't have a flat project anymore you'll make quite a mess so anytime you need to set your work down to have a good reminder of where you're at and make sure that you're only joining two sides never hurts to set your work down you also want to make sure that you've joined into the appropriate stitches along because you want your pattern to line up. So you want to check your work every now and then to make sure that you joined into the correct stitches and that everything's lined up. One of the good tips that I gave you earlier in the video was that you're always joining in the same color stitch in the join sections of this. So anytime you notice that you're trying to join into a different color, that's a great reminder that something is a little off and you may just want to refer back to the pattern and or the chart to make sure that you're on target. Okay, when you're ready to begin the fringe edging, you can join in any stitch on anywhere around the perimeter of your blanket. And we're gonna join with a slip stitch, chain one, and single crochet in the, six, in the same stitch. Whoops. And single crochet in the same stitch. 
Now, to do our elongated twisted fringe, first we want to decide how long we want our fringe to be. However long you want the fringe to be, you want to elongate your loop three times that amount. So if you want a three inch fringe, you would elongate your loop to nine inches. And then you want to pick an object that is the length that you need for your elongated loops, and that way you keep a nice even length. So I'm going to use this little sign here and elongate my loop, take my crochet hook out, and twist. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. You want, to, you want it to be tight enough that it kind of twists up on itself. So depending on how long you're making it will determine how long you, how many times you twist. And then I'm going to place that loop from my finger over where the stitch needs to go in the same stitch we just worked, reinsert my crochet hook into the loop and the stitch, yarn over and pull through everything to slip stitch to join it there. And now we're going to retwist it. I think it just is really helpful to manually twist the fringe into place instead of just letting it work itself. So we've slip stitched back into the stitch that we single crocheted in, and now we'll single crochet in the next stitch. Once we single crochet in the next stitch, we're going to elongate our loop, take our crochet hook out, twist. I twist away from me on this part. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. And that will depend on how long, how long your uh, loops are. I like to mark with my pinky the halfway point. It kind of helps the fringe to twist on itself evenly. Place my loop over the stitch where I intend to put the slip stitch. Insert my crochet hook into the loop and the stitch. Yarn over, pull through everything for the slip stitch, and now when I'm manually retwisting the fringe, notice that I'm twisting towards myself on this one. And maybe five or six times is all it takes. And then single crochet in the next stitch. And you want to do this all the way around your project. The only thing we're going to do differently is that when we get to the corner, we're going to do a bit of an increase here. We're going to do three separate fringes into the corner. So I'll show you what that looks like when we get there. Okay, we've made it to the corner, so we'll work our first single crochet into the corner. We're going to do a total of three single crochets, three slip stitches, and three elongated twisted fringes all into that chain three space for the corner. So we'll start with our single crochet. We'll do our first twist. I'm twisting that away from me, sliding it up to the chain three space, inserting my hook into the loop and the chain three space, slip stitch, and then single crochet again into the chain three space, and then retwist the fringe. And I'll slide that stitch over a little bit because we're going to be putting a couple of stitches in here, making room in the chain three space. slip stitch into the loop and the chain three space, single crochet in the chain three space, readjust the fringe, twisting towards me, or towards you, <laughs> slide everything over so we have room to do one more. If you happen to have a bigger chain space, hold on a second. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. If you happen to have a bigger chain three space or would like a little fuller of a corner, you could certainly add more fringe to your corner. But I like the way three looked. Okay, so that we've got our three for the corner and now we'll continue on into the next stitch and you'll work one fringe, one single crochet, and one slip stitch into each stitch across every side and put three of each of those in every corner. And then once you've made it all the way around the entire perimeter of the blanket, 
you can slip stitch to the first single crochet at the beginning of the round to join and fasten off. Be So Baby yarn is machine washable, but I do recommend using a laundry bag when washing this item just to keep the fringe preserved and just to keep all of your beautiful delicate stitch work preserved. You don't want anything to get snagged on a zipper from a pair of jeans or a clip or something else on a piece of clothing. So it's always better to put your handmade items into a laundry bag first and they do wash up beautifully with Rapture All Natural Delicate Wash. You can also give this as a complimentary gift to go along with the blanket if you're giving this as a gift. You can find Be So Baby Yarn, Rapture, and the laundry bag on my website, as well as the pattern and everything else you need to make this beautiful baby blanket. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all, please leave them for me in the comments. And if you want links for how to order the pattern and the yarn, both are available in the video description. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you in the next video.